people all over the country and over the world that hear about helium inevitably end up at this coverage screen trying to estimate the amount of helium or HNT they can mine on a daily basis. However, I don't think this is the most resourceful way of doing something like that. We have other resources at our disposal, like this helium interaction hexagonal map. We have this helium visualizer. We have these two blockchain HIP17 releases that give us some more information. And finally, we have this H3 hexagonal engineering outline to explain the use cases of this design. Let's see if mining is worth it where you are. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Just a reminder, please like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. It will tell YouTube to spread the word to other people searching for information uh, like this that can help them make more informed decisions regarding the Helium Network and HNT. So before we jump right in, let's do a quick hotspot update. We're looking at 23,977 hotspots. In yesterday's video, there were 23,835. So it looks like there has been an increase in 142 hotspots since yesterday. Um, that's always fun just to keep track of as the network is always evolving and growing. So to get into this video, we're trying to understand the, the if it's worth for somebody somewhere to get a helium hotspot miner. Now, usually people are doing their due diligence and their research and trying to find out if it's worth it. They'll end up at this screen um, as this is the most common screen. Um, and it is useful. It gives us an idea of the scale of the network. When you first look at it, it's pretty impressive. Um, however, it doesn't give us much information as to the profitability or the earnings power of these hotspots, unless we dig into each of these individually, which is time consuming. Um, so there are other ways of doing this, which I've discovered. So if we, uh, if we poke around on the internet on some of these blogs and some of these engineering posts, we can find a interactive map that looks like this one. Um, this one is found at helium.place. I will put a link to this and all of the other uh, interactive maps and blog posts that we touch on in the description below. So you'll be able to go through them yourselves. But a little background on this map here. Um, as you can see, it's um, it's similar to the other map in that it shows us these little blue dots are all the hotspot locations. Um, and there's a little color legend down here. The most important pieces here are the red and the green and valid witness zone and green is the sweet spot. Now, a little, you, there is a little bit of background information that's helpful in understanding what this map is showing. And I'll try and explain it to you briefly before we look at the actual posts. Um, basically, the Helium Network, um, they've designed it as to work on something that is a, they've designed it to work on a map that's has a hexagonal nature. Um, and pr contrary to popular belief, the more hotspots in a certain location doesn't necessarily mean the better coverage or the higher earnings power. Um, that is sort of the, the main theme of this video. And I'll try to explain to you how that's the case, because that's originally what I thought is, um, is, oh, if I'm in a big city and there's a lot of hotspots around me, let me just plug one in and I'll be earning HNT um, like crazy. That's not necessarily the case. It doesn't mean that uh, you won't earn HNT. It just ha it does play a huge role. This sort of hexagonal underlying structure plays a huge role in the earnings power. So right off the bat, we can see that this right, the red zone, which we're seeing here, as we click, this will move. The red zone is the invalid witness zone. So th there are a few ways for H T to earn, for these hotspots to earn H T. One of them being um, witnessing, um, and now we can see that the red is an invalid witness zone, and green is the sweet spot. Now, in order to to understand this this interactive map, we have to understand that there is an underlying source code that determines how effective some of these hotspots are in their earning power and their efficiency. This map gives us more of a visual to identify um, to identify those locations and um, exactly what 
we could expect to earn from one of these hotspots in a particular location. So if we look here at the color legend, we could see all the hotspots. We can see the invalid witness zones and the sweet spots, which is something we've never heard of, or at least is not available on the previous map. So if we're using this map, obviously these are all the hotspots in San Francisco. Now, if we click on the map, we will see a this hexagonal structure that appears and we'll see um, an invalid witness zone and a sweet spot. Now, through some of the blog posts we'll get to in a little bit, we'll learn that this invalid witness zone is basically saying that these hotspots in this red zone are just too close. Um, and the, the ideal difference, the ideal uh, proximity for a successful witness is this green location. Now, um, that is, that's what this legend tells us, but there are some other features to this chart, which we can see here. As you can see here, here's the HIP-17 hex controls, which it also references this engineering post, which we'll get to in a second, but it, it tells us that there's these different resolutions. I usually use resolution eight. Um, keep in mind, all of these resolutions do matter, but this gives us a little bit of a visualization. Now, these, ideally for the most efficient network or the most efficient hotspot miner, there will be one hotspot in each of these hexagons and they will all be connected. Um, they will all be witnesses and of each other and they will all participate together in the network. Now keep in mind, if we change this resolution, there are different sized hexagons. These are all working together to help connect everything. Uh, this is the smallest one. Um, now, they don't give you an exact formula of how the earnings power is determined, but we have to understand that um, first, this witnessing sweet spot is very important. Secondly, um, it's ideal for one hexagon, for one hotspot to be in each hexagon. Um, as you can see, this is a very, very large resolution. Um, it's just important to keep that in mind. Um, and as we go through this, we'll try to better understand how this is working, but this gives us a lot more detail into how the earnings power is affected. Um, as you can imagine, uh, San Francisco has is very, or at least this area of San Francisco is very populated with, or very dense in, with hotspots. So if we, uh, now to understand, to, to, the way we have to start to think about this is that that's not necessarily good or it will, the the network will decentivize so many hotspots being so close together by reducing the earnings power of some of these. Now, if we go to this engineering post here, we will see that this is the release. And if we read a little bit, we'll understand more. Um, so we'll understand that this, this new change, this hexagonal structure is basically um, they're referring to it as HIP-17. So it's saying the primary goal of HIP-17 is to scale the rewards for challenges, aka transmitters and witnesses, aka receivers, depending on the H3 hexagon they are asserted at. This change to reward distribution is to better incentivize coverage by reducing rewards earned by transmitting witnessing hotspots in close proximity to each other. The formula used for the scaling are detailed in the above link. Um, and they go on to explain a little bit more. They say, essentially, we expect an optimum density at every possible H3 resolution. That's what, so that is talking about these different resolutions. They're expecting an optimal uh, density at each of these. So they're basically layered on top of each other to work that way. Um, if the challenge is found to be in a hex where the density is higher than the configured optimum value, they would get scaled rewards, meaning, uh, where the density is too high, the the rewards will be scaled down based on the amount of people in there is what I is how I read that. The witnesses for those transmissions would get the scale of the transmitter applied to their rewards as well. It's important to note that the scale of the witness does not matter. Um, so it's it's it gets a little bit complicated and I think it's a little bit more detailed than they're trying to tell say here because I'm sure it is, but this gives us a little bit better information. And now they do try and really drill home the point that, um, well, this, this quick blurb here says that, um, they did, uh, 
they did model the network with the corresponding scale values. Um, and they give some examples here. Um, one being the most ideal uh, space, which is the green, and then red being 0.1, which is the least ideal or least efficient. And they do make a big point to note that the scale value on the below images does not apply to overall reward scaling. It's only an indicator of proof of coverage transmission reward scaling. A scale of 0.2 does not mean that a hotspot overall rewards will go down by 80%. So they're saying that this is not this scaling method here or this scaling model is not what's entirely driving the earnings power of a hotspot. Um, however, it is rating it in some way, and I do believe that it has some sort of impact. Of course, they're, they're explicitly noting that it's not solely based on this scale. However, this is the most information we have to try and understand the profitability and the earnings power of these hotspots, so we're definitely going to look into it. Um, as you can see, as these get closer, um, this is showing you um, this is showing you a much more dense area. As you can see, the orange and the red, it's saying that these are just all too close to each other. So the rating is much lower, one being the best, zero being the worst. As you can see, as they get a little bit more spread out, there's green here. Um, this is an update to this release, um, a little, a few bug fixes that you could read through. Um, also, it's, it explains the same thing. Um, it shows some dense and some sparse scaling and how that impacts the, the scale. Um, now, if we go over here, this is on the engineering blog, it shows some use cases. Now it looks, this is what this design was modeled after and it appears to be that the ideal structure for these hex, this hexagonal pattern is for each hexagon, I guess on each different resolution, to have six neighbors. So on each resolution, the ideal spacing would be for one hexagon to have one one hotspot to have one corresponding hotspot in each neighboring hexagon. That is how I'm taking it, and that is what it's, that's what it's showing here. And as you can see, it's explaining that these hexagons are stacked on top of each other, so it's not just one resolution, but it's multiples. And this is sort of showing um, how it could, how these hexagons, by being placed on top of each other, can reach the largest space with, I, I assume, the fewest amount of hotspots. Is how I'm reading this. Now all of this is um, added is culminated in this other interactive map, which is found at hip17.helium.wtf. I'm not sure why or they came up with that, but uh, it's pretty funny. Um, but now this is another interactive map that sort of combines the other, the previous two. So this is showing us all of the hotspots. It's showing us the names, and it's giving us a a. Uh, legend here for the actual scale. So we're able to visually see how these how these hotspots are performing in different cities and different locations. So you can see that the very dense areas of San Francisco have a very poor scale rating. I'm assuming that's because they're just too close to each other. There are too many hotspots in each resolution. As you can see, as they get a little bit farther apart from each other, they're getting more towards the blue and the green, which is what we're seeing here. Um, and as we go over here, it seems like this stuff here is ideally spaced. We have a lot of, we have a few blues, a few greens, um, but it's interesting. My main takeaway from all of this is that my initial thought was, oh, if I'm in a big city and I get a hotspot and I'm surrounded by all these other hotspots, we're gonna be talking to each other and connecting and providing extra coverage and we're gonna get rewarded more and more h and I don't think that is, after this exercise, I don't think that's the case. It seems as though this green guy over here has a one scale. Let's try and see if we could find this guy and we'll see how many H and T he is, um, he is mining each day. So if we go here, I think that's salty. Is it salty sangria Buffalo? Um, let's just try and, uh, it's tangy. I'm sorry. This is a little bit, this is, this website is a little bit slow right now. Uh, it's Salty Sangria Buffalo, and it's to the right of Piedmont and to the left, it's right near Montclair. So let's go to this helium coverage map and let's actually see if we can find, let's see if we can find how many this guy in Montclair, uh, California is mining each day. The name is Salty Sangria Buffalo. So if we go over here to this coverage map, 
Let's dig in and try to find him. Actually, let's see. Salty Sangria Buffalo. Perfect. Um, so this is the one we're looking at here. Salty Sangria Buffalo. Let's see how he is doing. So as you can see, the, the scale is the same. So it's giving us this green one scale, which is also what this map is telling us. Salty Sangria Buffalo is at the scale one. Um, let's see how they're doing. As you can see, wow. So it looks like they've mined almost 30 HNT uh, in the past 24 hours. And looking at this map, you would say to yourself, wow, he's really in the middle of nowhere. I don't think he's going to get much, have much mining earnings power, or he's going to be able to earn that much HNT. It seems like that. I mean, that's one of the highest earning hotspots I've looked at in a long time. Um, now let's just try and get an idea. Someone who's in here, let's see how, let's see how they're doing compared to 30 HNT a day. Let's pick a red one. Um, so sa sour foggy snail. Let's just let's try and let's find out how sour foggy snail is doing. Sour foggy snail. View hotspot details. It should be a very low score here. Um, based on what the other map is showing us and it is it's red and it's 0.09 it's very low let's see what the 24 hour earnings power is for this hotspot. oh looks like we got a little bit of an error sour foggy snail what are you earning in 24 hours so this guy earned 0.53 hnt in 24 hours i think that that reassures us that this map is very useful. This H, this hip 17helium.wtf is a very useful map combined, especially with the um, helium.place map where we can actually see the different resolutions. These are both extremely powerful maps and they give us an idea as to the formula behind the earnings power of these hotspots. I think we can conclude here by by drawing one main conclusion, and that is don't be disincentivized to purchase a hotspot if you are in one of these um, more remote areas, because it seems as though the it seems as though the remote areas are doing extremely well because they are more they are more spread out and they are not overcrowding these these hexagons, these underlying resolution hexagons in this hip 17. Um, I hope this is very helpful for a lot of you. I hope it incentivizes a lot of people outside of major cities to get um, these helium hotspots, and um, I hope they prove fruitful. Um, please let me know if you do get one and you're not in a big city how it works out for you. But uh, I'd be very interested. I'd be very interested in hearing it, um, and I hope this helps. Please like and share, and subscribe, and we'll help spread the word here and continue to grow this network. Thanks for being here, everybody. I really appreciate it.